What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. In the last video, we talked about estimating the sample size from A-B test. In this video, let's discuss another topic related to A-B testing, which is the topic of metric selection. Metric selection is one of the most common A-B testing questions in data science interviews. Interviewers often ask questions that require interviewees to select metrics for the purpose of A-B testing. For example, what metrics would you use in an experiment to understand a feature change? Given the importance of metric selection in the context of A-B testing, this video will discuss this topic in depth and focus on the following things. What are driver metrics? What are the attributes of driver metrics? How to develop and select driver metrics? I will use an A-B test example from YouTube to talk about how to select metrics. Let's dive in. Driver metrics, also known as surrogate metrics, are indirect or predictive metrics that are often used to measure short-term objectives. These metrics align with the goal of the company, are sensitive to short-term progress, and are actionable so that teams can be driven to work toward them. In a nutshell, driver metrics are the major metrics used for A-B testing. Let's consider a simple A-B test of an ad campaign. The difference between the ad in the control and treatment group is its design. The goal of the ad campaign is to increase total revenue from sales of items. But given the goal of the campaign, how do we select which metrics are best for the situation? Conversely, which metrics are bad? There are three overall criteria we can use to evaluate driver metrics. First and most importantly, a driver metric should be sensitive and timely. In particular, a driver metric should be sensitive enough to reflect the change made in the product. The clicks rate is an ideal driver metric for this example because once we change the design of an ad, the change will be reflected in the click-through rate. We can also look at the conversion rate. In this case, it's a percentage of users who take the desired action, such as making a purchase, which is also an indicator that one ad is better than the other. On the other hand, the data active user of a particular product being advertised might not be a good driver metric because it can take time for people to purchase the product, start using it, and become a daily active user. Daily active user may be better suited as a success metric than a driver metric because it can be impacted by multiple factors and may not be sensitive enough to the change in the ad. This is not to say that bad driver metrics are unimportant for business. They are. But such metrics are not appropriate for running A-B tests because they are not sensitive enough to measure the treatment effect. Driver metrics should also be measurable, meaning we should be able to calculate the metric with the data collected during the experiment period. In tech companies, most experiments are designed to run within a time frame of days or weeks, so the metric we select should be suitable for such time frames. Using the example of the ad campaign, the clicks rate is very simple and easy to measure because the counts can be easily obtained even in real time. The measure is simply the number of clicks divided by the number of impressions. Conversely, the monthly active users and the monthly user retention rate are bad ideas for metrics because they cannot be calculated within the time frame of the test, which is typically days or weeks. Finally, a metric should be attributable. In other words, we must be able to attribute the change in a metric to the experiment variant. This requires us to be able to measure the metrics in the control and the treatment groups separately. Using the ads example, we can easily attribute the change in clicks rate to the design of the ads. Good design results in a higher clicks rate, and bad design results in a lower clicks rate. These are the three attributes of good driver metrics. Now let's talk about how do we come up with driver metrics. In practice, there are many ways to come up with ideas for metrics and validate existing metrics. Metrics can also be developed by combining qualitative and quantitative methods. Qualitative methods include techniques such as user experience research, focus groups, and surveys to understand users' needs. Quantitative methods include analysis of data, such as analysis of logs to see what users do and find patterns in the data. But very often, we don't have time to leverage all those methods to come up with metrics from A-B tests, especially during interviews. Time is very limited. So what can we do is understand the motivation of an A-B test and define metrics specifically for measuring the changes. There are two ways I have found particularly helpful. One way that I found helpful to come up with metrics is to fully understand the goal of a test. Is the goal about user growth? Is it to improve engagement? Or is it to increase revenue? 
is the change about acquisition, activation, retention, referral, or revenue. We want to be as specific as possible to fully understand the goal. Doing this will help you come up with a metric or two. Let's look at an example. In 2021, YouTube ran an experiment to test hiding dislike counts on videos. According to the company, the goal was to better protect the creators from harassment, help ensure small creators and those just getting started can thrive, and create an inclusive and respectful environment where creators have the opportunity to succeed and feel safe to express themselves. So what metric can we think of based on that goal? Assuming this feature change will help YouTube achieve its goal, we would expect to see small creators become more engaged on the platform, post more videos, and spend more time on the platform. So two possible driver metrics for the goal are the average time spent on YouTube per creator and the average number of videos published per creator. Ideally, both metrics will be larger in the treatment group than in the control group. Other than focusing on the goal of a test, another way to come up with metrics is to analyze user experiences. Consider the steps users in each group need to take to use a feature or product and think about some metrics to measure the difference between user experiences. Typically, most products or features have a funnel that moves users towards taking key actions or desired outcomes that are meaningful to the business. And the changing user experiences may positively influence more users to get the desired outcome. So the difference between user experiences can lead you to appropriate driver metrics. For the YouTube example, what is the desired outcome? Well, the desired outcome is the favorite dislikes on videos on smaller channels. In the experiment, YouTube assigned viewers to different groups. The control group could still see the count of the number of dislikes for a video. In the treatment group, viewers could still dislike a video to share feedback with creators, but they were not able to see the counts of dislikes. Given the difference between the control and the treatment groups, as well as the desired outcome, what metrics should we use for the experiment? One metric is the average number of dislikes per viewer, which will indicate if a user gives more of fewer dislikes. Also, given that the goal of this experiment is to protect smaller creators, we can measure the average number of dislikes for smaller creators. Ideally, we will see a decrease in this number. Here are some experimental findings shared by YouTube. Viewers were less likely to target a video's dislike button to drive up the count. In short, our experiment data showed a reduction in dislike attacking behavior. We have also heard directly from smaller creators and those just getting started with their YouTube channel that they are unfairly targeted by dislike attacks. Our experiment data confirmed that this behavior does occur at a higher proportion on smaller channels. Although these findings do not mention the exact metric YouTube has used, we can tell that it was closely related to the company's original goal of the feature change which was to protect smaller creators. To summarize, we have talked about the two main strategies for developing driver metrics by considering the overall business goal and the difference in user experiences. In the next video, we'll go over another top A-B testing question in a data science interview, which is to choose a randomization unit for an A-B test. If you liked this video, you may also want to grab my free product case interview cheat sheet to help you with async product case interviews. Also, make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss the next video. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video.